What's up guys, it's Aiden, and today we're going to go through how 21 Savage's Red Rum was made. Let's get into the video. Red Rum is the third track off of the third studio album from 21 Savage, American Dream, and it was produced by London on the track and Peeb. In today's video, we are going to be deconstructing the song so accurately that not even Shazam can tell the difference between our remake and the original song. And in today's video, I'll show you exactly how this song was made using only stock plugins within FL Studio, so everyone will be able to follow along with this recreation so you can do it yourself. Before we get into it, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Melodics. Over the last month, I've been getting serious about learning to play the piano. It is an invaluable skill to learn as a music producer and learning to play the piano the traditional way can be a very slow, costly experience. I have tried this in the past. It often involves learning how to play sheet music and getting a, a private tutor, which can be very costly if you're doing that on an ongoing basis. So instead, Melodix has allowed me to learn how to play on my MIDI keyboard without having to leave my own house. And I can focus specifically on learning the important aspects of piano playing to learn as a producer. So over the past 30 days, I have learned to play countless chord progressions. I know all the, uh, chords in all the keys so I can play all the keys up. I didn't know how to do that before. I've learned how to play several songs and I feel much more competent standing in front of a MIDI keyboard or a hardware synthesizer because I can come up with more complex ideas on the fly. So thank you to Melodix for sponsoring this video and for helping me to become a better producer in the process. You can try out Melodix for free in the link in the description below. If we go to whosampled.com, we can see that Red Rum samples the song Serenata do Adeus by Elza Laranjera. Sounds like this. We're going to be taking this sample up by two semitones and speeding it up to the project tempo, which is 172 BPM. After 16 bars of this sample playing, we are going to skip forward into this vocal section in the song. And as you can see, when you bring it up, we're going to be fading these two sections. I looked up the translation to these vocals and the lyrics, which were in Portuguese, seemed to be unrelated to this song. And so the use of this sample was strictly to create this soft romantic vibe. This softer intro actually props up the dark, violent, powerful persona that 21 Savage is portraying in this song. It's creating a massive contrast, which can help to captivate the listeners. Whenever I hear this song, I have this vision of this sort of Peaky Blinders idea where 21 Savage is this mob boss in the 1930s. And he's just sitting down at one of the clubs that he owns, because if you're a mob boss in the 1930s, you just own a bunch of clubs and he's just watching the singer perform on stage and it's this really gentle soft performance and it's just right before he goes off and does some dark mobster things and that's the vision i have when i hear this song after 32 bars of this sample playing on its own we're going to start chopping up the sample and adding in some drums 808s etc <laughs> This sampling choice creates a very clear sense of tension and release. So we have this pattern of three repetitions plus one variation. And this is a common idea in sampling based on the pattern recognition of humans. We hear a sample play three times and become accustomed to it, anticipating some sort of continuation or resolution. This anticipation builds psychological tension as the listener is kept in a state of suspense as to whether their expectations will be met or uh, defied. The tension and release here is actually amplified by the sample choicing here because the first sample plays at D. <laughs> then goes down a perfect fifth to G. These first three repetitions establish a tonal center and the perfect fifth is the second most consonant interval after the octave. So it's perceived as inherently stable and pleasing to the ear. Adding a high pass filter to the chopped part of this sample. This way we can introduce new low end instruments such as 808s and kicks without having to worry about any dissonance between the low end from the sample and the low end from the new instruments that we are adding. And here's where it gets interesting, and you might not have noticed this in listening to the original song. We're actually going to be reversing these individual chops from this sample, not playing them in any other order, but just playing them in reverse. This is a really creative way of adding development to the instrumental without having to introduce any new components. 
And so we're going to be alternating between the original chops and the reversed chops for the rest of the song. Let's add in the drums. For the kick, I was fascinated to see that once again, we are going to be using the rack kick. And on top of that, just like in our last remake of Drake's first person shooter, we are going to be taking the pitch up by two semitones. You can see this if we export the kick pattern into the playlist and compare the waveforms with the original song. Once again, the waveforms match perfectly. Then we have the identical snare. This is the Luger snare, and as you can see, we are taking up the out to shorten the decay of the sample to make it more plucky. Let's compare the EQ to see if we have the identical snare that was used in the original song. Just look at these frequencies here. Adding in the exact hi-hat sample, which is the hit one hi-hat sample, and we're just going to be playing this down at B, and we're playing a two-step loop. Then we're adding in a second, more subtle snare, which accents the first one. Let's keep it moving. We have two more instruments to go through. Let's add in the open hat, which plays a syncopated pattern, adding more rhythm to the bounce to the rhythm. Then we're actually going to be cloning this sample. So right click on the sample and go clone. And we're gonna go into this new sample and hit reverse. And that's gonna sound like this. Finally, we are coming into the 808. The original 808 is the Lex 808, but this doesn't play for long enough. So we're going to be right clicking on this sample and go edit in audio editor. We're going to be enabling snap to zero crossing. So let's go to the little magnet on the bottom right and right click it and go snap to zero crossing. So we're going to be selecting two points in this 808 sample where it's passing from positive to negative phase, also known as zero crossing. And we're going to be going control L to create a loop. But the issue here is that the volume is decaying over time and we want the volume to be static in the loop. So we're going to go to the volume volume envelope and let's make two points at the start and end of this loop and we're going to boost the volume at the end of this loop. So now if we take this 808 back into the sampler, as you can see we have this leveled 808 loop. Taking up the crossfade smoothens the transitions between the start and the end of the loop which will create a seamless and continuous playback. Finally, we are going to reverse the polarity as it was done in the original song. So if we export this 808 pattern into the playlist, if we line up the 808 with the original song, as you can see, it matches perfectly. That is all the components. Let's play the final result to see if Shazam can pick up the original song. for the remake today if you enjoyed this breakdown and you want to see some more complicated breakdowns more about our, our advanced projects you should check out our remake of first person shooter by drake and j cole from his latest album for all the dogs if you're a dog that is um thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time